Hi guys, right, I've uh, found the uh, found the camcorder at long last and the battery and uh, the charger just uh, had been put away uh, over Christmas but I found it. So, back to normal. Um, I thought we'd just have a look at this uh, Eli Tech, Eli Tech, however you pronounce that, STC uh, 1000. Uh, this is uh, very popular in the uh, aquarium uh, hobby, uh, you know, marine tropical fish, and it is uh, just basically a temperature controller. Um, now I have uh, a couple of other temperature controllers in the workshop used on my BGA rework gear. Uh, one is a Rex C100, and the other one is a PC410, which has uh, far uh, more features uh, and things like that. Um, but this uh, seems to just be a very basic. Uh, version of the the Rex C100. Uh, it's really cheap. It's 15 pounds, um, so you know no issues <laughs> with that at all. Now I don't know how this is used by uh, you know the more experienced guys on uh, uh, in the hobby and on the uh, on the forum. But my idea was to use this uh, with uh, a heater, uh, you know the tank heater, and allow the tank heater to uh, to operate itself with its own thermostat and only set this uh, a few degrees higher than the, uh, the the heater thermostat is working at in case the heater thermostat should ever fail and it's stuck on and so instead of boiling the tank uh, this will override it and cut the circuit going to the heater um, Somebody on the forum said, well, how can you do that? Uh, so, and I thought, well, maybe I've misunderstood how this, uh, how this operates. But, yeah, fortunately I haven't. And uh, uh, hopefully it will uh, work as, uh, as I intend it to. Uh, so, we'll just have a quick look at it, how it comes. It's uh, in a small case. I've taken the, uh, the back cover off. And yeah, this is plugged in uh, at the moment to the main supply, albeit on an isolated supply. So yeah, you know, just the usual safety warnings. Uh, don't be fiddling around with stuff like this live, uh, unless you've got an isolated power supply and you know what you're up to. <laughs> okay. Um, so that would normally be on there. There is a screw-on cover that just shields the terminals at the back. So there's just a screw on to remove that. And then on the side you have some little adjustable sliders that will lock this in place if you are mounting it in a um, you know, a hobby box or whatever it is you are mounting this in. Uh, so that's that. The unit itself, I'm just going to fire it up. Uh, it has. You can actually turn this off completely if you want to override uh, certain things that it's doing, depending on how you've got it set up. But you press and hold the standby button and uh, I've already set this up so the relay, um, I forget which one it is, hang on a sec, let me look at the heat relay. Yeah the heating relay is uh, this one here and there's two contacts here and if you look on the other side the two contacts here are simply shorted out when the relay is uh, is activated. So you could, for instance, uh, just break the neutral wire going off to your heater or the live wire going off to the heater, and uh, that connection would only be uh, uh, activated, joined together when this is uh, telling it to. Uh, so um, I've got this set to. 15 degrees, I don't know if you can see that. That's the temperature I want it to switch off at, and I want it to heat uh, at any temperature below that. So it's currently saying heat, it's also showing the current temperature, which seems fairly accurate. It's um, consistent with my Rex C100 that is on the other side of the workshop. Uh, that's uh, on all the time, and it's currently saying 12 degrees so uh, you know they're, they're pretty pretty much saying the same thing uh, so because it is get that on camera because it's heating I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get this 
meter on camera or not <laughs> yeah hopefully you can see both things there but because that's now in heat mode you'll find that relay is activated and those two contacts are obviously uh, joined together so if uh, you had your live wire plugged into the mains and your neutral wire had been cut and attached to both of these uh, terminals the uh, Maria, the heater would now be on. Now if I just quickly grab the end of, where is it, there it is, if I quickly grab this and just allow it to heat up to 15, sorry, uh, yeah 15, I'll just, just let it go, I don't want this to overshoot too much. Yeah, I don't know whether you heard that but the relay has clicked off and uh, if we just have a look at the yeah, you see there's an open circuit now. So the relay has uh, disengaged and power would be cut to that heater. Uh, so my idea was uh, to um, set the heater as it is now to, uh, it's about 25 degrees in the tank. I was gonna set this to 27 degrees. So if the heater failed, um, <coughs> and it failed on, it would then be cut out by this. Uh, this also has uh, an alarm I think you can set. Yeah, I think the uh, alarm, there is a buzzer just on board there. I hope you can see that, it's uh, just down in there. Um, I mean, it's very simple, you've got AC in, you have a, a transformer here which is uh, providing 10 volts AC, it's rectified just very much like the uh, one I the rectifier I took out of the, uh, the hood uh, of the, uh, the Kemp Marine that you might have seen the video on and uh, all of the work is done Get this all tangled up here. Let me bring it in a bit, uh, a bit closer. You'll see all the work is done by that chip in there. Uh, the chip is an N79AE8211, and it's, uh, I mean, it's basically a 10-bit analog to digital converter. Um, tiny amount of flash memory, a little bit more of uh, normal EEPROM, E2 squared, uh, and. Uh, what else? Yeah, eight to ten bits. Uh, it's got two PWM channels uh, as well. Um, so that's what's doing all the uh, uh, all the work. Um, so that's the uh, that's the idea uh, in my case, just to have this as a, a you know safety override cutout set a few degrees above the normal tank temperature. Uh, the other idea is uh, possibly to have a second one of these. Um, and set a few degrees lower than the tank normal temperature so if the heater should fail off in this uh, the temperature will go down by one or two degrees slowly uh, and that will allow the other one of these to turn on and uh, at the same time uh, activate the second backup heater I think I've got that right in my head of <laughs> what I'm doing with this. Um, I can't think of any particular issues because this actually does work uh, as, as I wanted it to. Um, now the other thing you could do with this, um, some of you on the Ultimate Reef Forum won't have seen any of my videos on BGA rework and things like that, but um, one of the things you can uh, do instead of having the switching output here you know, in the live or neutral wire you can actually uh, remove the relays uh, just because these relays are being activated by uh, it's about 12 13 volts in this case uh, let me just grab the probe here um, so you've got this is the relay connections just down here um, and you've got negative here and then depending on which relay is being switched there is a 12 13 volt uh, supply sent to this pin and that closes the relay but if you took the relay out 
you can transfer that uh, 12 13 volts to that pin uh, and have this pin as new, as ground uh, sorry negative uh, by connecting it to here so you would bridge you put a wire link in from there to there and another one from here to here and then when this circuit is uh, is working you'll have a negative and plus 12 volt rail appear at these two terminals uh, what that will allow you to do is uh, activate a solid state relay that of course solid state is not going to be making any noise whatsoever uh, this will uh, the input can be uh, 3 to 24 volts a DC so you yeah, absolutely no problem no problem switching that from uh, the the unit uh, and then you just connect your uh, AC on the uh, on this side so you'll have uh, again you'll, you'll be breaking the live circuit here and it will be coming out there but only when this uh, has been activated uh, this will handle up to 25 volts if it's a 25 volts, 25 amps uh, if it is uh, correctly heat synced there is a small heat sink already and uh, you know the the heaters we're talking about 200 watts 300 watts whatever uh, is really not going to bother this very much uh, at all so if you don't like hearing relays click on off uh, like I don't then again depending on how you use this as I'm using this as an emergency override the the relay won't be clicking uh, ever uh, hopefully <laughs> but if you're using this as a uh, you know a temperature controller to replace the the heater uh, thermostat uh, because maybe it's more accurate I you know I don't know I don't know how the guys are using this but if you are using this as a um, a thermostat for the heater you as I say you can get rid of the annoying relays clicking on and off just by using a solid state relay uh, so yeah well that's that really um, it's it's definitely going to do what I, uh, I I want it to do and uh, just going to get this uh, well I don't know how I'm going to do it I might put it in a project box with the uh, with the solid state relay um, but yeah not sure but at 15 pounds it's it was substantially cheaper than my Rex C100 and I, as far as I can see, the features, uh, you know, aren't very much different. So you know, this is quite a good uh, buy. Uh, it's also nice to see all the connections actually solidly soldered uh, on. <coughs> excuse me, uh, on here, on the other PIDs, the Rexy 100 and the PC410, they uh, they use spring contacts, so they'll have screw terminals, but they're mounted to the back case and uh, when you pull it apart all the wires come with it and they're only touching the board when you push the two units together uh, and they do in, you know require spring tension uh, to make good contact which I always thought sucked um, of course this is a lot safer this way because uh, the connections are inside the unit and uh, with the little shroud on the uh, on the back it's uh, you know it's actually quite uh, safe and secure from fingers poking in but of course it's got to be fitted in a project box of, uh, of some description um, or I suppose you could mount it through the side of a uh, of the tank cabinet you know at the bottom in a in a box so you can see the panel uh, easily from the uh, excuse me from the outside of the of the tank um, in case you were wondering I don't know whether you can even see it but if you look at those tracks from the relays yeah, that's basically the in and out on the two relay pins you'll see that they've kind of flooded that with solder and uh, depending on the application in this case it, it's been done purely to allow uh, higher current to flow the more solder you've got on there the lower the resistance and the higher uh, the amount of current that can actually throw flow through uh, the uh, the PCB if you just had the the copper track itself um, it might not like uh, 10 amps I think is the, these are what these are rated at um, let me just turn that over I can't read it actually it's too small but I think they were 10 amp at uh, mains um, so yeah that's what they've done that for 
just to include, increase the current capacity. Anyway, so that was it. Um, obviously, I'll update everybody. Um, oh, no, I won't. I'm, what I'm going to do is show you how to adjust the parameters. Uh, you basically press and hold the S button for, I think it's about three seconds, and you have four parameters, F1, F2, F3, and F4. So scroll through to them, you've got to press you know, F1, F2, and scroll through. And then to select it, you've got to press S. And now you've got to press S and the up and down buttons to adjust the parameter. So click S and change the value that you want. So if I want to put this down to 14 degrees, we'll do that. And then to store it, just press uh, the standby button and you'll see that set light has gone out. And you pretty much do that for the four uh, available parameters. Uh, I don't, obviously, once the uh, heat is cut off, uh, the other relay is activated for cooling. Uh, obviously, there's many different arrangements for cooling. It's not even something I've looked into yet. Uh, we're lucky in the room that the tank is in. It's uh, a fairly stable temperature throughout the year. Uh, very thick concrete walls. Um, so I'm not convinced I'm going to need to use much cooling, but whatever your chosen method of cooling is, you can run it, uh, you know, either directly off of the, the relay, or again, uh, if you want, use a solid-state relay on a heat sink of the the right size, and obviously all safely boxed up, etc., etc. Uh, so yeah, that's it really. Um, any questions? Uh, have a comment on uh, on the YouTube channel, or uh, or on the forum. Thanks a lot.